Since this video is especially off-putting, let's first look at some lobsters peacefully digging in the ocean sand. A little bit of cuteness before watching the video will do some good. An interesting concept is that of choice. It seems as though we have, yet it seems as though we don't. We do not choose in which family and country to be born, nor at what time or as what gender. We are also not in control of what awaits us at the end of life. There are no options here whatsoever. It's terrible to think about, but people always take an interest in the secret and the unknown. Some of humanity has been able to find non-standard approaches even in matters regarding the studying of death. Physicist Paul Doherty and writer Cody Cassidy handled this task rather creatively. They released a book describing the craziest, scariest, and even the most fantastical ways to die. For example, what happens if a person is sent to dive to the bottom of the Mariana Trench? There are many obvious answers, but how about this one? They will be eaten by zombie worms. For starters, a man without equipment will choke. If you escape this bit, then death will come due to the sheer pressure. The latter will push in the chest and compress the nasal passages and throat, all the cavities where the air is, after which one will no longer be able to ascend. The authors of the book did not stop there either. They theorized about a person still being alive and conscious at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. This would be bad news for them. At such depths, there are all kinds of terrifying creatures, and it's quite possible that the diver's cause of death would be bone eaters. These translucent deep sea worms penetrate the skeletons of dead whales. They have special bacteria that make a nutritious soup out of bone tissue for their hosts. These worms would certainly not mind diversifying their diet with a human skeleton for once. With that at play, the diver would probably want to end things quickly. Still, Doherty and other scientists may have had other thoughts in mind. They identified the most painful ways to die, and drowning is just one of them. You probably know what a drowning person looks like. He screams, waves his arms, and actively struggles with the elements around him. This is how the process is portrayed in the movies. Yes, in the frame, it looks dramatic enough and is not associated with any particular pain, but it has nothing to do with reality either. In about 10% of cases, children drown in front of adults, and they do not even suspect what is happening. The drowning individual doesn't actually scream, but rather makes attempts to breathe when he is above the water. And he doesn't wave his arms either, but pushes himself up with them to the surface to try to take a breath. In addition to being silent, drowning is extremely painful. Water enters the lungs, causing spasms and burning pain. Surely there's been a time when you once swam carelessly, or perhaps drank some tea, and then you swallowed wrong. Remember that feeling? And now add panic to this, as well as struggling with the water and constantly getting it into the lungs. By the time a person loses consciousness, he will have experienced whole minutes filled with severe pain, fear, and agony. Another way to end one's life, as painfully as possible, is also connected with water. Suppose a diver who was going to the bottom of the Mariana Trench changed his mind about the dive. He unties the stone from his leg and begins to quickly rise to the surface. That way, he'll avoid meeting the bone eaters, of course. But now he will get acquainted with decompression sickness. Due to the high water pressure, divers breathe compressed air. It contains more oxygen and nitrogen than on the surface, with the former being used by the body and the latter being stored. This is good as long as the diver stays at depth. When he rises to the surface, however, the ambient pressure decreases. If this process happens too fast, the nitrogen expands and makes bubbles. Sometimes they say that the blood seems to boil. But the truth is that the gas bubbles, along with the blood, also end up in all the organs and muscles. This causes tissue tears and excruciating pain. And to this might be added an uncontrollable feeling of restlessness and convulsions due to oxygen poisoning. And this isn't even the worst thing that decompression sickness can do to a person. A tragedy once occurred on the Biford Dolphin submersible drilling rig back in 1983. Two people went down in a diving bell to a certain depth. After completing their work, they were raised to the surface. Before leaving the bell, the divers had to spend time in the decompression chambers where the next two divers were already preparing to dive. But one of the workers violated certain instructions and an explosive decompression occurred. Due to a sharp drop in pressure, the gas in the bodies of the divers instantly expanded, literally tearing people apart. Not many people are familiar with diving and decompression, but many of us have seen another way of extremely painful death every day. It first began to be used by the ancient Persians around 300 to 400 BC for torture and punishment. The English word painful comes from this painful method of death. It's called crucifixion. Naturally, it is associated with Christianity and the execution of Jesus. 
There are important details here that do not concern the historical or religious side per se, but rather the process of crucifixion itself. There were several ways to implement it. In one of them, the victim's hands were nailed through the wrists, right where the median nerve passes. If damaged, a person feels as though they were struck there by lightning. The same is done with the legs as well. Surprisingly, scientists have done experiments with crucifixion on humans, without puncturing the limbs, of course. All subjects noted a rapidly growing pain in their hands, thus turning the experiment into real torture. It's not for nothing that the Romans considered crucifixion to be a particularly painful type of execution, and Doherty and Cassidy described it in detail in their book. Since the time of ancient Rome, humanity has become more humane. Even where the death penalty has been preserved, it is still carried out with the help of a lethal injection, which allows the convicted individual to leave our world as calmly as possible. But is this procedure painless? It turns out that it's not. Numerous studies have shown that many on death row die painfully, and for a long time, sometimes for several hours actually. During this time, the convict may experience the same sensations as when drowning. This has also been proven by the autopsy data from the executed person. Their lungs are filled with fluid and blood. Such swelling, combined with panic and the horror of waiting for death, turns the humane method of capital punishment into a hellish agony. The same goes for the electric chair. Although it is no longer used, electric shock is one of the most painful ways to die. Electricity causes convulsions. Biological tissues under its influence swell and tear. Electric shock even breaks bones, and eyeballs can pop out of their sockets. All this has actually happened to those executed in the electric chair. In 1997, in Florida, one prisoner even caught fire in the head. People who are lucky enough to be alive after an accidental electric shock or lightning strike also describe the sensations as excruciatingly painful. This video is already getting to be a bit much, yeah? Perhaps you need a break to distract yourself. Look at the water, stroke your pet, listen to the birds singing, and light some incense. Actually, we advise you to avoid the latter because we are about to cover fire. Even a small household burn brings severe pain. No one in their right mind wants to imagine the sensation of being burned alive. At the same time, a person can see how their skin becomes charred and cracked, and then the flame reaches the nerve endings, burning those as well. Muscles contract painfully. Breathing becomes unbearable due to heat and soot. With luck, one might suffocate from it before the fire begins to burn with renewed vigor, the still living tissues underneath the cracked skin. Now, one might think that dying at the opposite end of the temperature scale seems like a more peaceful option, but that's not true either. Before a person sinks into a state of sleepy drifting, he suffers greatly. At first, hypothermia will lead to uncontrollable trembling in the body. Then, all the muscles begin to tense up and malfunctions occur in the body's functioning. The consciousness becomes clouded. Blood rushes from the limbs to the internal organs. Because of this, excruciating pain occurs in the arms and legs. Often the brain begins to perceive what is happening inadequately, confusing cold and heat. It's not uncommon for people freezing to death to undress to the point of being naked and trying to burrow into the snow or the ground. The elements can be very violent, just like other natural or physical phenomena. For example, there's radiation. It literally destroys the human body, bringing it great suffering. This process is called radiation sickness. Even small doses of radiation lead to terrible consequences, ranging from excruciating headaches to tissue damage throughout the body. Because of this, the internal organs and the brain are disturbed. Ulcers appear, hair and even teeth fall out, and nails come off. And to be a victim of radiation, it's not even necessary to transport uranium in your pocket or climb into a power plant reactor. The consequences of radiation exposure are also faced by those who are subjected to cancer treatment. And this is another point brought up in Paul Doherty's book about the most painful ways to die. By the way, he himself died after a relapse of this disease in August of 2017. All types of cancer are painful for a person, but the greatest suffering is caused by a cancerous tumor in the pancreas. This is due to the fact that cancer cells attack the nerve endings near the affected organ, which leads to severe pain and cramps in the abdomen, back, and often blockage of the intestines as well. One way to die was so horrific that it didn't even make it into Doherty's book. We are talking about the impact of the chemical chlorine, trifluoride. It was created back in the 1930s during the search to find the best liquid rocket fuel. The isolated compound was so caustic and reactive that it burned everything in its path. In his book, writer John Drury Clark described an incident with the leakage of chlorine trifluoride. 
A ton of the liquid spilled and corroded a 12-inch concrete floor and another three feet of gravel underneath, breaking through a total of almost four feet, approximately 120 centimeters, of solid obstacle. The area was filled with a chemical smoke that corroded everything in sight. Can you imagine what would happen to the human body under the influence of chlorine trifluoride? That's exactly why it was banned almost all over the world. Now, a good walk ought to help relieve the stress of watching this video. But you'd better stay home if you're in sub-Saharan Africa. At least if you know what a boom slang looks like. This is a snake whose venom practically sends its victims to hell. Researcher Carl P. Schmidt, once bitten by a boom slang, described this in detail. Instead of going to the doctor, he decided to keep a diary of his feelings. Due to the excruciating pain, his handwriting became illegible. The man suffered from bleeding out of all the natural orifices in the body. Boom slang venom prevents blood from clotting, which also causes hemorrhages in the internal organs and brain. Surviving after this snake bite is possible only by applying the antidote. But Schmidt, back in 1957, had no luck with that. So be careful in the water. Don't play with fire, and for heaven's sake, do not synthesize chlorine trifluoride. It would be better to just share your thoughts in the comments and tell us what you think about the scientist who diligently compiled the list of most painful deaths. But are such studies really necessary?